Alright, welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be covering theory for PPC injection. So, before I start, I guess, um, just make sure you read the description of my videos. That's where I put any sources that I have used for the content of the video. So, giving credit where credit's due. And my little disclaimer that I've been copy pasting, just saying that everything is for legal and educational purposes. So if you're not aware, um, red teamers and pen testers frequently go through phases of development where they'll be working on tooling such as what I've been showing on the channel. Obviously they're doing it at a higher level than I am, but you know the underlying theory is still there and you've got to walk before you can run. So. That's why I'm just learning slowly but surely. All right, so with that said, um, APC injection. First, we need to understand what APC is. So APC stands for Asynchronous Procedure Call. Now, you might have heard of the concept of uh, async asynchronous, whatever, through lectures or programming or whatever. But I'm just going to explain it again really quickly in case anyone's never heard of it before. If you want like a complete tutorial on asynchronous task uh, performance, I guess, then this isn't the place, but this is going to be a very basic overview. So you can think of async like you're cooking dinner for yourself and Let's say you have to cook vegetables and you have to cook a protein. So if you put the vegetables on the stove, you set a timer, and then you stop worrying about the vegetables, you wait for the vegetables to cook, and then while that timer is going, you then go and you cook your meat, you set a timer for that, then the timer for the vegetables goes off, and then you go back to doing the vegetables. That's basically what asynchronous uh, means in essence, is that you're only one person, but you're doing multiple tasks while one task is kind of in a pending state, a waiting state. So if we kind of visualize this, for anyone who's a visual learner, if we have a thread, this is one thread, okay? So we have one thread, and this thread is going to do Let's say this is the runtime for task one. And then down here, we'll have the runtime for task two. And then we'll go back to task one. So what actually happens is, uh, let me grab my other color, is right here, this is where task one becomes um, in like a, a waiting state, basically. In Windows programming, it's called a alertable state. And what this means is that something happened in task one where it's waiting for completion of some other operation. So let's say this is, uh, it's doing a big IO operation. So, this would be this would normally be blocking, right? You wait for the I/O to finish before you can move on to doing something else. What asynchronous procedure calls do is, while you're waiting for task one to do its operations that normally would be blocking during this time frame here, you say, "Okay, I'm just gonna let that do its thing in the background, and I'm gonna work on task two. And then here, this event is when the I.O. or whatever it is finishes. And then that's finished, so you resume task one. Um, some examples of what this could be is I.O. is a simple one. Maybe you're reading a bunch of data from a database. Or another example is user input. Maybe you're waiting for a user to make a connection and send a bunch of data, stuff like that. So. You can imagine that there's quite a few cases where asynchronous procedure calls might help um, 
might help provide efficiency in terms of a program's execution. Okay, so that's kind of a high-level overview, very basic of async. And by the way, in case you're wondering, the reason this is different than multi-threading is because if this were multi-threaded, then we would have thread one and thread two, and then this would be task one, and this would be task two. And these are like the run times. So that's the difference, basically, in at a very simple level. Um, OK, so with that out of the way, that's some basic theory. Now, how does this actually work for getting a process to run shellcode? So what's going to happen is we're going to have, this is our program, this is program pseudocode. We're going to have one function, func1, and function1 is going to do something that will place the thread into the alertable state. So it could be a call to a number of uh, functions, such as sweep ex, or it could be um, wait for single object, something like that. And this will place the thread in the alertable state. And now we'll have function two, and this function will take a, um, as a parameter, a handle to the thread that's running function one. So we have a handle onto the thread that's running function one. Then we have function two, which takes that handle. It then runs virtual alloc. This gives you um, memory space within the process to write your shellcode into. Then we have, you know, memcopy. This writes the shellcode into the address returned by virtual alloc. Then we have virtual protect. Virtual protect will modify the uh, the permission of the pages where the um, where the allocation is mapped into virtual memory, and then we have the heart of it, which is Q user APC, and Q user APC is basically what adds your um, your task to the APC queue of a thread. So if you picture like a thread here, if uh, it'll have a queue. So if we just have like simple thing here, this will be like a task. It'll have like a queue of stuff to do. So then if the thread is ever placed into the alert alertable state where it's doing something like uh, wait for single object or sleepy X, then it'll check the APC queue. And if there's something in the APC queue, it'll execute that task while it's in the alertable state. So, um, right, so when, when the thread enters the alertable state, it reads from the APC queue, execute the task, and the task that it's going to execute is this. So you need kind of like you need driver code that manages all this driver code to get a handle on the thread, driver code to um, to take like you, maybe you need to take a snapshot of the processes, find your target process, and then enumerate all the threads, and then maybe you have to queue an APC task into all the threads and just hope that one enters the alertable state. Or maybe you're doing it locally, in which case you can control it by uh, in, by having something like SleepyX built into your code. Um, so that's kind of how the APC injection works. It can also be done where 
instead of um, injecting into like your own local process, you can spawn a process in uh, a suspended state and then work from there. And this is called um, early bird APC injection. Um, I'm not going to go over that today. Uh, I'm still learning it myself, so maybe that'll come out in a, a different video. But that's basically the theory of how how this method of injection works. And basically, my goal is to find what the most reliable and viable method is to combine with uh, Hell's Gate from the previous. Um, yeah, and that's pretty much it. I just wanted to provide one more little bit of background information. I'm thinking of making a whole video on this just because I could use a refresher myself. So when we talk about process injection, what that actually looks like is um, I'll just touch on it at a very high level. So local process injection, right? This is your your portable executable, your PE, and this is on disk. So it's on disk, right? And then you have higher addresses, and then it grows this way. Um, and then you'll have your sections like the locations. There's more, I'm just writing down a few of them. And then you have the section table. You have your um, PE header and then your DOS header. And basically what happens is there's a, a fancy process here with um, your operating system's memory manager. And then this maps the, uh, the process into, into virtual, virtual memory. And then what we're doing with local injection is we're taking um, our process, which is running in memory, and when we call virtual alloc ex, we're giving it a block. Let's say this is 100 bytes. We call virtual alloc ex. We tell virtual alloc we need 100 bytes of memory inside our process's address space. That'll give us this, right? Virtual alloc will return a pointer to this. So let's just say um, E void. We then, um, we then call memcopy. So we have our shellcode down here. Uh, 9090, whatever. Memcopy takes this shellcode and writes it into the address uh, of the allocation. So now you have to imagine that this is full of shellcode. Then we change the permission bits on this allocation, the RWX, RWX being read, write, execute. Um, that's done with the virtual protect. And then, um, then we execute the, the QU. So, well, I guess after that you could do whatever. Like you could, you could just create a function pointer that points to this address and then call the function pointer. You could do a number of things from that. But when we talk about in memory or processes address space, that's kind of what's being talked about here. Is uh, is this portion the the executable in in and then here are all your sections. So like, you have the dot relocation. It all stays there. And I can do a whole video on how it gets from disk into into VRAM and what that looks like, paging and all that stuff, page tables. Um, so if you're interested in that, maybe drop a comment. But I at least wanted to cover conceptually what's happening because I've, I've been saying in memory a lot, but I didn't actually make it clear what that meant. So when people say, 
in memory versus on disk. They're just talking about these two things. All right, so um, that's all for today. I'm going to get the code working and then uh, show you guys the implementation in C, and then we'll go from there.